We open this program, we open this program with the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. We invite his assistance tonight with this program. Dear viewing, listening, and listening audience, we thank you for tuning in to channel 82 to share the enlightening information that will be expressed by our panelists tonight. This is only one of a series of bi-monthly talks, and I'll say dialogue, that we hope to have over the next year. This topic, or these topics, or dialogue, will be announced as time arrives. So please, continue to tune in and let others know for the future programs that's up and coming. The shock factor, sensationalism, or extreme controversy is not going to be needed to excite your emotions this evening. The stimulus tonight is going to be responsible, important, and serious along with intelligent dialogue. And I'll say information sharing. We thank Master Muhammad, who is presenting this program tonight, which is titled Perceptions for Progress. Now we have a host of uh, presenters who are going to talk on the subject of black family matters. We have who is going to be kicking off in our, our panelists tonight, Imam Basim Muwakil. That term Imam only means leader, just like you say minister of the church. He's the leader of the Muslim community of Masjid Muhammad, Bermuda. We have Miss Lori Shield, who, will, who is the head of the Center Against Abuse, which is a woman's resource center. We have, and I must say that she is pinching for a Mr. Desmond Crockwell, who was unable to make it tonight. We were uh, advertising that he was going to be here, but personal business prevented him on late notice from uh, uh, being here tonight. And he wants us to know that his heart is with us and he's be, he'll be tuning in as you all are. We have Bishop Lynn Landy of Agape Safe Kingdoms Ministries. And last but not least, we have Michelle B. Caldoun, mother, grandparent, and retired civil servant. We thank you very much for making it here this evening, and we hope that you will satisfy. <laughs> yes, please be relaxed. We hope to, to talk to the audience as they are out there relaxed. We hope to talk to them the same way. Now, all of our friends out there, I would like for you to call your friends and let them know that we are on channel 82. We are streamlining on Facebook 82, channel 82. We're on YouTube channel 82. And we're on, I believe, television channel 82.bm. Please call your friends and family and let them know. TNN. TNN. And TNN. I came on at the last minute. We, we got a lot of help here tonight. This speaks to, I believe, 
the serious, seriousness of the subject and the matters. Now we have six major areas that were propped or prepped for tonight. And you know, when we get anxious, we, we, we say a lot. Hopefully, we, we're going to say enough within the expanded time allowed without having any restrictions on what needs to be presented. But we're going to be limited, knowing how four people, an hour and a half is going to go in a quick time. So, <laughs> starting with the first question of the night, which is to our listening or to our panel. What are family values and why do they matter? Now, before I ask anyone to respond, when we think about the term values and matters, it incorporates and reflects on relative worth or importance. It's reflecting on why we should be serious and consider in considering values. With that in mind, we're going to ask us to consider the first question. I believe that our Imam has an opening remark before he's about to tackle the questions. So I'm going to start with Imam Basim Mulako first with his opening remarks. And then when he's finished, I'll then direct to the question of what are family values and why do they matter? <clears throat> Imam? Thank you. Thank you. Um, just, well, first of all, we want to thank God for the opportunity to share with you our views on family, what is family, and the importance of family. After all, family is the foundation of our society. Humanity has come a long way in technology, medicine, information is everywhere. Yet we're here today talking about the family, in particular the black family, problems within the black family. Well, technology has come a long way, but technology doesn't have a beaten heart or emotions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although the technicians may differ with me, Technology is material, metal, plastic, wood, put together to make life easier for us. It's not flesh and bones or spirit. But those behind technology are thinkers, always thinking and adapting to give us a good production. Well, the family should be like that. Always thinking and adapting to give us a to give the world, really, a good working person. To discuss the ideal family, we need an ideal or idea, yes. a structured idea, a thought that will lift us up and not pull us down. The words raise, to raise a family comes to mind, encouraging family members to do their best. After all, it's a weak idea, concept that brings us down and keeps too many down. The technicians, they don't make something out of nothing. He needs material from the earth to produce what he wants. He finds in the earth an endless supplies of material, but he is not the creator of that material. Mankind, human being, is not the creator of himself. If we think that, then indeed we are lost. I say that to remind us that we have a creator. Who better to fix us than our creator? Our creator is not human, but the, crea but the creator inspires men and women with solutions for family problems. We call it divine intervention. There was a man who lived over 1,400 years ago. And in his city and country, there were many problems, the worst problems of humanity. In fact, it was an embarrassment for them to have a girl child. Mm -hmm. And they used to bury the babies alive 
out of embarrassment. So they had many problems. And this man, this one man, <clears throat> used to go up into the hills and mountains to meditate. He did not go to the leaders of the, of the society or the country. He went to the mountains, a place of seclusion, which tells me that he went to a higher place within himself to find a solution. In that place, it was revealed to him to read, to recite, to remember in the way of your Lord who created. Created human beings from a clinging clot, a clinging substance. Read, and your Lord is most bountiful, most generous. He who taught man the use of pen taught man that which he did not know. So we have here a reminder that God is the creator of all things. All knowledge comes from him. He is most generous. That, in reality, he is the teacher of man. He taught us what we did not know. It also connects us with creation as a support system for man. Why is he reminding us of this? Because, as it says in another verse, most certainly, surely man exceeds all bonds because that he thinks that he is self-sufficient. For the solution to family problems, we have to go to a higher place within ourselves. The best place within ourselves. And if we are sincere, maybe God will bless us with a solution. Indeed, ideas are important structures. We have not accepted the best ideas to build a family on solid ground. Solid ground being ideas that stand toe to toe with the best of structures in the world. So that wherever we go as a family, as a human family, wherever we go in the world, we can pitch a tent and be equal with the man that lives in the palace. The black family, us, the former slaves, are still living under the same system that made us slaves. We are a former, we are, we as former slaves are now in government or running government, are trying to work with that same system, the same ideas to keep us, that kept us in bondage. This is not just a local system, but a worldwide system. And we wonder why things are still so tough. Political, educational, religious, financial. Our country is in $3 billion debt. And if that is not slavery, tell me what is. We are working with old ideas. They have not served the many, but the few. Surely I believe that the day that I was born Things were a lot better than the day that my parents were born. And we thank those who struggled to make it all happen. And I do believe that the future will be better than the present for those who accept the best ideas from the creation. In closing, let me just say, the Quran says that righteousness, righteousness is not turning your face towards the east or to the west. Rather, righteousness are those who believe in God, the last days, the angels, the book, the prophets, who give charity out of their cherished wealth to relatives, orphans, the poor, the needy, travelers, beggars, and for freeing slaves who establish prayers, pay the tax, and keep the pledge they make, and who are patient in times of suffering and adversity, and in the heat of the battle, it is they who are true in faith, and it is they who are mindful of God. Thank you. Uh, you, you it, it makes me feel like I should shut down right after that. <laughs> that was so I, impact. I mean, well, that's a lot. I'm not asking you to be I was, apologetic. I was still, I was still I was to ask, one thing. I'm not asking you to be apologetic. <laughs> I'm just giving credit to okay. that volume of work that you presented. Mm. I'm not well, at all, all criticizing. No, no, I he, think he was he, great that, that was a whole mouthful to, for thought. Mm. And it makes me reflect on how broad the term family is. 
when it comes around to family, we must not just look at the nucleus as blood tie, as under the roof, but a group of persons of common ancestry. A people of, or a group of people regarded as deriving from a common stock having to do with race, etc. So on point, mm. this is balance, and we need to see the broadness. That's why we you know this, this subject is not going to be covered in one night, the broadness of the term family. So we're going to ask that we now be brought back to focus on the question, which had so much support with that presentation. What are family values, and why do they matter? As it relates to your profession, Michelle, how do you respond to that? Wow. With my profession at Center Against Abuse, we see victims of domestic abuse and sexual assault, mm. men and women. And so when it comes to that, there's, of course, some type of breakdown yeah. in the family, yes. some type of breakdown between a woman and a man. Sometimes it's a man and a man or a woman and a woman. Yes. Um, and the result of that is hurt. The result of that is pain. The result of that is not even knowing themselves because they have been in a relationship where they have created themselves to be everything to that person. And now that person has more or less stated they don't want them. They want to throw them away. It's almost like you feel like trash. Mm. But you want to get back to the person mm -hmm. that's trying to throw you away. That's not being kind to you. That's not being nice to you. That's, you know, doing all types of evil towards you. But something in your heart is saying, that person that I met, that's where I want to get back to. Mm -hmm. And it's a very unsettling um, time to go through for the person to actually get back to who they are, mm. get back to the family values mm. if they have it. Mm. If they have that family values, if they have that grounding, mm. it's easier. If they don't and they were raised in dysfunction, what we would call in that violent or in that abusive atmosphere, arena, continually, that's normal. And so the chaos to them is normal. Mm. Mm. Because mm. that would be the value that they hold. Mm -hmm. That's their norm. Mm. You know, and people are saying, this is not normal, this is not normal. But peace feels no, uh, peace is not normal to them mm. because they've never known it. And so they have to learn how to be happy and how to be okay with peace. And it's a very difficult lesson to learn when all you've known is chaos. You know, uh, Michelle's speaking to the question of when values are missing. Mm -hmm. yes. We're asking a question, what are the values? But we cannot ignore that some people have now arrived at the fact that they don't need to special specify yeah. in having values. Now, Bishop Lendy, yes, knowing what you are doing regularly in trying to speak and speak to and keep responsibility to the family every week as a bishop. How do you address that question? Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm getting a little older, right? And uh, just a little. Yes. And um, I find it difficult to keep my core in check, OK? You know, because this is where the strength is. Yes. You build up your muscles. And so when I look at family, there has to be core values, mm -hmm. OK? Core values that are steeped in, I believe, and what I said earlier, belief. A belief system that brings character, that produces uh, um, behavior that's conducive to society. We don't have that in the home, and I think that those core values are, set, are steeped in a sense of purpose, destiny, mm -hmm. is steeped in building esteem, and also strengthening the family and giving them confidence. Mm -hmm. 
I believe that that is so very important. So I'm going to use two, two things I believe is important. Discipline and structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Omar said structure earlier. I heard it in his, in his discourse. It was wonderful. Uh, Discipline and structure. Discipline and structure. No, I read the Bible. Yes. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Yes. And when he gets here, he won't depart. So when I look at my life, I grew up in the church. I went out there to pack. I did some things, you know, I delivered everything. But because of the structure and the core values they'll put in me, respect people, respect your elders, speak, say good morning, all those little things, they come out of the house. And so we have what we, today we have, um, I think the sister talked about it, um, a breakdown in core values in the house. Mm -hmm. We have children talking to their parents anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, those type of things. And this is where we have to, uh, I believe, the black family go back to those things. Come on, we, we all here. Remember those days you couldn't do nothing in the neighborhood and get away with it? Yeah, <laughs> you, you I don't think any of us. But we're a little older now. But a little older now, yes. Some people, because of their age, they don't know that because now children are having children. Yes, yes. We're having younger grandparents. Yes, we are. Yes. And some of those grandparents have said, they said it to my face, that I, this one of the stories that was told to me directly, that they never liked being taken to Sunday school and they vowed that when they become a parent, they're never going to send their child mm -hmm. to Sunday school. Wow. And they'll leave them as an adult to make the decision if they're going to go to Sunday school or not. Now look at that. Mm -hmm. But look, look at the core value of respecting life. We have all these killings going on today. Just, yeah. just that alone. You know, that value of valuing somebody else's life or life itself. Mm -hmm. You know, go on. But guess what? Sunday school, Sabbath school, any type of religious organization, that discipline, I think, is needed. And, and in the household, it's very important. When, when you have, because uh, you have all types of people, yes. you have a real shit may come. Yes, yes. All yes. types of people. Are they receptive of what is the core values that they need to now adopt? Yes, I know. Can we just be frank? We want you to. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's be real. I don't want to call no names, but um, our, our system broke down discipline. We can't discipline in the school. You know, you have children now who can run to um, um, the police station and run the parents in. Like, what type of nonsense is this? Come on. You know what I'm saying? So we, do. we, we broke that down, and, and we haven't addressed it. But on that point, mm -hmm. now there are statistics that show that the adult became so extreme in discipline that they abused the child. With corporal punishment. Yes. They, yes. they thought they were correcting the child, but they became extreme in their management of corporal punishment, and the child ends up in the hospital. So you have legislation yes. that said, well, we've got to protect Tech. the child yes. Yes. from the parent who is out of control. And you're absolutely right. I can see it. I hope she's listening. My, my mom would have been running in for abuse. <laughs> okay. However, you know, when I went to school, came back, I said, Mom, you know, it's, it's forgiven. It's a done deal. You kept me out of jail. Okay. However, today, the way I approach people when I'm doing baby dedications and all that, I tell them that each child, you know, the Bible talks about uh, um, um, spit a rod, you spoil the child, but it talks about a measurement. That rod is a measurement. So each child has to be taken on the individual basis. So, so one child, you might have to put in the corner. Well, you know, I find that don't work for some children because they get in the corner and they talk to themselves. <laughs> you know, and another child has other things, but it, that road doesn't necessarily mean the road that, that the old, old school right. talked about. You know what I'm saying? I got you, man. Yeah, it means, it means a management tool of discipline for that particular child that works. And we got to find it because every child is different. I have four. Well, they're all adults now. Every child is different. Uh-uh. Grandparent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, Mother. Woman, how do you respond to that question? Um, this is this is a good conversation, you know, and this is what dialogue is about. And I hope that the families are gathered listening to it. Um, I'd like to kind of go back to what family means, if I may. And uh, 
there are three types of family, and um, I think it's been said, but it bears repeating, that it's not a place. Family is not a place. First family is by blood. Mm -hmm. Parents. Yes. Right? yes. Your yes. siblings. Yes. Your grandparents. Your spouse. Mm -hmm. Your offspring. Your grandchildren. Right? Your uncles. Your aunts. Mm -hmm. and your cousins. Mm -hmm. Blood. Mm -hmm. The second family is a, a socially constructed man-made, and it's, but it's important. It's about your friends. Yes. That's the second family. That's right, that's right. That's those right. that you went to school with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those that you are bound by ethnicity by, and we talked them tonight, we're talking about the black family. That's yes. our family. Yes. Okay. yes. In another yes. respect. The third family, I want to bring it full circle to what the Imam was talking about. The family of humankind. Mm -hmm. The broad family. The broad family. Mm -hmm. And I think as we carry on this dialogue, we have to look at those three families. Yes. Because we're each members yes. Yes. of those three types. Yes. And as the Imam had said, and as Bishop Landy said, in both scriptures, you know, it is the Creator mm -hmm. that we are all from one human family, by, created by one God, Allah, Yahweh, Jah, whatever you want to call. Yes. yes. So I think it's important as we have this dialogue that we remember that we're members of those families. Yes, yes. And we can't discount it. It's not in a place. It is in an idea, a well-constructed idea. That's right. Filled with good values. With you saying that, I, I want you to, I, I want us to zero in on that because of the value of, the, of that comment. I believe when we think about the types of things that's a part of the erosion of family. Mm -hmm. We have to look beyond the nucleus. The blood ties are nucleus. Mm -hmm. The villages of family. Yes. yes. The communities, ethnic groups, different fellowships. Yes. The family of brotherhood of religion. Because some of the leaders of religion are keeping divisions because they don't see inclusiveness of religions with due respect to each religion. So when we think about the broadness of family, how do we see the family values that we may have very separate and different, but we still have a responsibility to the global family, even though we may have these differences. So when you talk about family, and I guess for those in the listening public and here, you know, having been a graduate of the Barclay Institute, we always ha have to have three points. <laughs> So I gave you the three types of families. <laughs> <laughs> Boxes so, always so, got to get in there. Yes. Yeah, keep the end of you. Greenhouse. Keep the end of you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me bring you back. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So I, I thought about this value proposition, and uh, I like that word, core, mm -hmm. because I think I tried to zero in. And the first one, that I thought of is trust. Nice. Within those three different families, there has to be a level of trust. In that core family, mm -hmm. in, that, in that first family that where dysfunction may have existed, we have to create an atmosphere of trust. Uh, and when I say trust, it's about truthfulness. Okay. Some things need to be said. Yes. By who? In the family. In the family. We have so families. Some of us don't have leadership in the family. So 
then you have support resources. You have you can go to the second family. That's oh, what you're talking about. Oh. Right? And then you have the third family where you go to your faith. Mm -hmm. So we there is I am I don't accept the fact that that we cannot create solutions. Yeah. Someone said to me recently, life is not about the problem. It's it's about living in the reality and creating the solution. But that contribution, you know, I, I think that boy paid to how the group that constructed this very balanced program came up with perceptions for progress. Mm -hmm. How are we perceiving these values and these matters that is so inextricably linked to family. Now, getting back, getting to the second question. And you didn't let me finish my values. You know, but we've used up time. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, I just I'm, wanted to, then I could but, just but drop, you, drop you the words in, on you, you, brother. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, 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 drop those yeah. words out, because I think they've been But, very but see, I've already allowed that time. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. don't, 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 don't underestimate me so right now. So okay. respect. Right? Mm -hmm. And in respect comes discipline and honoring differences. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the last one, we have to have love. Yes. We have to have care and yes, we do. Yes, yes. We do. Thank you, Brother Palmer, for indulging me. And and because of the value of that contribution, I'm 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 gonna allow that to have happened. Mm -hmm. But because of how extensive we all can be, we're gonna be consider that we may not get to the end, but that didn't mean that you didn't cover enough. That's right. Thank you. See, because uh, b believe me, mm -hmm. the extent in which you are speaking is deep. And I believe if we don't complete, it wouldn't be no loss. It won't be no loss. How do we define family? We've heard family as a spin off from the question of values and how much it matters. Now, what is the best picture of family when we think about family? Because We've got all different descriptions of family today. Mm -hmm. And let us be frank about what they are, because we're living in this society that many of us, we had a, heard a very uh, uh, influential couple say here late <clears throat> on national TV that they've been together for 38 years, and if they had gotten married, they knew it wouldn't have lasted 38 years. Oh. Oh. I want to just let that sink in a little bit. What's that message that's being sent out there? They can survive without commitment. Once you consider commitment, you have no discipline to survive. How do we say there, Mr. Imam? When we think about how do you define family, what is the best picture of family? Well, as I said in my opening statement, the best picture of family would be developing, structuring a excellent idea that will advance the family. Um, we know in the Bible, or I don't know, the Bible, the Quran, mm -hmm. I believe it's in the Bible also, mm -hmm. that Noah was instructed to build a place of safety, build an ark for his family. <clears throat> and his son, Mm -hmm. refused to be a part of that. Sure. And Noah called out to go, look, this, the rain started coming and, and I said, look, this, this, this guy's part of my family. This is my family. Please, God, help me. God said, no, he's not of your family. He doesn't have the same spirit, the discipline, the truth for decency. And all. He doesn't have it. So, so let him go. Mm -hmm. Let him go. He's, the, the point being that He's not doing what's in the best interest of the family, okay. and to, to give in to him will be weakening the, the family. family? Yeah. Michelle. If, if I may, um, my time is up. No, 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 I've said that the idea and the ideas that we've had is what we've seen in the society. And that beating and stuff, that started from slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm gonna beat you until you Submit. Obey, so obey. Yes. And so that's what we saw and that's what we passed on to our that's families. True. Right. It was not always good. That's true. It was not always good. That's true. 
Yes. In fact, um, a sad history, not only in Bermuda's incarceration units, that this, the submission didn't stop, or beaten into submission didn't stop in the public. When they got in prison and they weren't satisfying the officers, mm -hmm. the cat o' nine tail, you can remember that, yeah. right? Yeah. That was a very inhumane piece of equipment mm -hmm. that caught a man's skin up. Mm -hmm. And some people in Bermuda felt that because their son said, or their daughter said, that they're not going back to prison because of that cat o' nine tail, that prison was okay. It caused the prisoner to not want to go and commit a crime again. Mm -hmm. And for people today are saying, if you want to correct this child who is doing what he's doing that's unacceptable within our community, bring back the cat o' nine tail. I'm hearing that in my ears today. That's, that's basically because we're not really thinking. We're not really thinking. We're just responding to what, what we thought worked. Let's put it that way. Yeah, but, but the reason why I brought that up is so important to know that your point is that strong, mm -hmm. that we're holding on to old ideas mm -hmm. and we're trying to change things. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we're talking about abuse. <laughs> How do you define family and what is the best picture of family? So if I can share a bit about my family and my story. Do so. Um, family is choice. Whereby mm -hmm. I came from a maternal grandmother who was raised in a household where her father was extremely abusive to her mother and her and her siblings. He was an alcoholic. Mm. She was sent away from the house when her mother died, when she was 16. And she said she had had enough beatings from her daddy mm. and seeing her mother beaten enough that she knew she didn't want that for herself. Mm. She also knew that she didn't want alcohol in her life because she had seen enough of that. Mm. Her two brothers became alcoholics. One of them followed the same pattern as the father and beat his girlfriend. And it ended where the girlfriend stabbed him 119 times. She was the last person the last female hung in Bermuda. Patterns repeating from family. My grandmother made a choice. I'm not gonna have that for my family. I'm gonna choose someone who's not an alcoholic. So she purposely sat in her mind. No one had this conversation with her. She just saw what she had at home and she knew she did not want that for her offspring. She did not want that repeated. And so she ran out to look for a good man who would treat her like a queen, which she found. Mm -hmm. Who had the values that she was looking to instill in her children. This was a man who took the children to church. Yeah. He took his children to church. Oh. He stayed with them at church. That was my granny's day off on a Sunday. She went to her church, <laughs> mm, mm, <laughs> which mm. was not the same as her husband's. Mm -hmm. And so he raised his children in the church. And like you said, someone to tell the story. She didn't forget her story, so she told her story to her children. She told her story to her grandchildren about how she made a choice. Mm. And it's not until I got in this role that I realized her choice made a difference in my life mm. because I saw a different and she taught me different. She shared her story with me about, hey, you don't want to be with someone, put your hand, their hands on you. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be with someone mm -hmm. who is an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. I had that, it's no good. And so for me, that family value was someone that you can trust. 
-hmm. someone that was honest shared their story. Someone that taught you that there's a greater power, that there's a God. Someone who would support you through right and would stir you right through wrong. Mm -hmm. Somebody that was there for you when you weren't on your best days to support you. Mm -hmm. So that for me is family. It's helping each other, encouraging each other. Um, I had the blessing of having great grandparents on both sides. Mm. I had one grandmother who stayed home, was a homemaker, and my grandfather went out. And on my paternal side, when we came along, my grandfather was retired. And my grandmother still worked. She said, mm. She needed free time from her husband. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she continued to work. And it was of her own choice. So when we went to their house, he was the one who cooked. I never saw my grandmother cook mm -hmm. on my paternal side. He cooked and made sure her meal was prepared when she came home from the job because he was home all day. Mm -hmm. He showed us how to make popcorn, pancakes, and different things like that. You know, so we had... I feel like a very balanced um, view of family. That family doesn't look one way. Mm -hmm. Women's role don't look one way. Man's role doesn't look one way. You know, personal experience, and oftentimes we say, or we hear people saying, you know, until we hear that other voice, we don't realize what we really have. Mm -hmm. And some cases, we've got someone sharing the similar experiences. And it could be abuses also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they never get to see a difference. At the same time, you have some people saying mm -hmm. they have never seen negative to the point where they can uh, uh, identify when people are talking about abusive mm -hmm. issues. So Bishop Landy, when I think about how she's uh, 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 spoken, I, I think about the different uh, families, <clears throat> types of families, mm -hmm. the, what the village is made up of. Are we going to continue to point at what we should have and ignore what we know is existing? Oh no, we cannot keep pointing to what used to be. We have to address what's existing because um, um, abuse is a misuse of something. Okay, so when we have uh, family abuse, it's a, a misuse of what God intended the family to be. You know, and so, so I wrote something, and I'm going to share it because um, I believe a house, a family, of course, is a household, one, one form of family, but also a house should be a home. And it should be a stronghold, a place where you get refuge, safety, and protection for the racket. Um, mm -hmm. I, mean, um, um, I, I discipline my children different from my mom. Because yes. you have to have a change. Yes. You have to deal with it and address it in a different time frame. It's so very important. And my children are very much okay. You know, they're not doing everything I want them to do, but they're okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I wrote this down, sir. A, it is, family is an institution, an establishment of a unit that engage in effective communication expressed in positive care, mm -hmm. causing an experience of love that I call agape. Mm. Our church is called agape. Yes. It's not safe. I was supposed to correct that for you. It's oh. agape faith. Can you faith. Yes, okay. Can you ministry. But it's a, it, 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 the family is supposed to be an experience of love. That's, that's, that's the base. So what God beat somebody? Yeah, there are people in the church who have been um, misused love. Mm -hmm based mm -hmm. on slavery. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important that we change our paradigm, have a paradigm shift, yes. you know, towards a greater care yes. and a greater protection, but that's what him's about. Do we have, or what level of uh, unacceptable behavior that your, you experience within With the, the realm, family dynamics? Yeah, within the realm of your faith. Because we're talking about your contribution yes. from that perspective. And what is the reality when we see them coming in? Are they 
Are you experiencing a lot of the things that needs to be changed? Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Uh, one thing I want to say, you know, <laughs> it might sound humans, but, but, but Christians are people who have dysfunction too. Mm. You know, and so what happens is, you know, um, um, a lot of times, I wasn't talking about this later, but I bring it up now. A lot of times, um, we're functioning out of trauma. Well, function of the grief, which my sister was alluding to, and so as a result of that, we, we behave in certain ways that is very abusive. And so, yes, all the time. You know, I remember when I was in, in school, one of our professors told us straight up, he says, you men and women have to go home and make sure that you stand against abuse. Because you have somebody here, there, you know, of course, in our reformation, we have deacons, who's a deacon. You can't leave him alone and let him get away with that type of stuff. You know, we don't, we don't hit our wives. We, we, we don't beat up our children to, until they're bleeding. We, we don't do that. That's not, that's not what God intended for the family. Okay, and so, yes, in, in my short time of pastoring, which is 25 years this year, <laughs> you know, um, 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 we have been dealing with that and helping people to change. Coming out of that slave mentality, yes. what they know, and then even doing it because, you know, um, it was done to me, so I'm just going to do the same thing. Instead of learning, you know, again, back to that point, being repetitive, every child is different. With the fact that we have, in particular Bermuda, more churches than any other community yes, that you yes. think of per square mile. Yes. And we have so many respectful churchgoers. Yes, yes. And we look at a large number of dysfunction. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we have to reflect on the possibility of us not doing as we're preaching. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I'm, and I'm not just talking no. about Christianity. Yes. I'm okay. talking about oh, believers, believers in believers. religion. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No? Yes. The, the fact that we have the mother church being Christian in Bermuda, this territory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we've ended up with a majority of Christians, which is okay. Because moral acceptance can come from any religious body. Yes, that's true. But when it comes mm -hmm. on to a majority of things that are going wrong, we cannot ignore what the misunderstanding is within religion. That's true. That's true. So, Grandma, how are we speaking as grandparents to the extended family? Well, um, first of all, we don't look at the construct of family that is painted as um, the, uh, what should I say, the mother, the father, the two children, and the picket fence. Okay. When we talk about the black family, we are going all the way back prior to enslavement, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we carried those same values as we could in enslavement. And, and going to the grandmother, which I'm known as Nanya, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that it's a village. Mm -hmm. So grandmother represents that person in the, that brings the village concept. And for, for I am blessed to have uh, three adult children and six grandchildren. And uh, one of the things that, from a, from a grandparent, and it was so beautiful, Lori, to hear you talk about your grandfather. <laughs> so beautiful. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to have heard more stories <laughs> because we always, we hear about the grandmother. Mm -hmm. And the, grand, the grandparent has that time of retirement, but also, more importantly, they have life experiences. And it doesn't cost money. The walks, the telling of stories. I was blessed to share a room with my grandmother for the first 10 years of my life. So I was able to, and she was the child that was designated to live with, out of her five siblings, to live across the street with her grandparents. So I was able to have the benefit of four and five generations deep in my family because of those stories. The stories of helping to build a lodge in Warwick. We talk about social responsibility. So those are values that, and the stories about what it took to create unity in the family to make sure that when that person came knocking on the door and wanted to take your 
property from you. My great grandfather said, you're sitting on my deeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are strengths. There is strength in those stories from grandparents. No, no. I wish I could let you talk longer. Yes. But when it comes around to being relevant, can we say something's going missing when we listen to those two wonderful things you two women said? Because we can uh, say that we have some unacceptable behavior. The structure of the family is not what it used to be anymore. So are we going to excuse ourselves and not want to know the statistics of what quality of grandparent we have that's not doing the role in the extended family? I, I think that a lot of our grandparents are young, like you said. A lot of our grandparents weren't parented in the way. Weren't parented in the way that we were parented. So I'm not excusing that, but I also am saying there are solutions to that. And we need to share those solutions so that those parents and young grandparents can have some tools. Mm -hmm. And also, a story doesn't always have to be a good story. You can say how you might have gone wrong and you straightened up and flew right. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful story. Mm -hmm. That's a very powerful story. So every grandparent, every parent, we're not looking, we're not talking about perfection. We're talking about progress. Okay. We're talking about how we can progress that idea, taking them for a walk, showing them gardens. It doesn't all cost money. Reading them stories, well, telling challenge. those stories. So I would say that, yes, there are some challenges, but we, we were enslaved and we got through it. We got through it, and we're good. we can create that village and get through it again. We have 30 more minutes left. The threats, challenges to the black family. What are some of these current and future threats? Email. Well, I guess if we can't, if we can't manage our own lives, if we can't be disciplined within our lives and the ideas that we have, that have um, sustained us all along, then there will always be a threat. It will always be a threat. So we have to latch on to the, to the best of ideas and structure our lives in those ideas. It may be a struggle, but it will be worth it in the end. The goal in the end is for us to have peace, to have that tranquility and wholeness in our life, tranquility in our lives, be able to adapt to change that takes place in the world, but also not losing our moral principles. Mm. So I think that's a... That's, uh, People change, they change, but they lose the thing that, that upholds family life, that holds, upholds the individual life. Mm -hmm. And that is the moral principles. When I think about the different types of families, I, I recall the first time I was told by a person of stature in this country that he <coughs> was telling me I should not want to push the idea of moral responsibility and moral accountability because people's standards are changing and we can't push people on the box because of their changes. So that is, go ahead. That is man setting up his own law. Again, we didn't create ourselves. Yeah. But we have, how do we know when it's hot, when it's cold, mm -hmm. when something tastes good or bad? Our body tells us that. Yes. So in the same, the same idea, it is in the environment, it is in our, 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 what would you call it, our aura. When something's right, something's wrong, or something is hot, something is cool. Yes. We know what's right and wrong. It may be okay for you if, if, if <laughs> yeah, it was reported that the prophet had said, if you didn't got no conscience, do as you wish. 
because nobody really can help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you don't have no conscience, oh. do, do as you wish. Because yeah. yeah. oh. no one can help you. Michelle, mm -hmm. what do you see as the threats, challenges of the, the black family, current and future? We now have this saying, Mr. Shakir. I've even heard it in a song. Drink your water and mind your business. People say, mind your own business. But for me, I'm my sister's keeper. Yes. I'm my brother's keeper. Yes, yes. Who is there to hold you accountable yes. if not for your family, yes. your friend, your co-worker? I can't mind my business when I see you doing wrong. And that's, that's not okay. Mm. So we are raising our children to mind their business. Whatever they're doing, you don't need to get involved in. But if we have a connection, whether it's family, whether it's friendship, whether it's we are black, we have a responsibility to assist that person to be better. The family being the village. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I hear of times when people would have the whole community over to build a house. We don't have that anymore. We're now going to pay the bank to build our house. That's a moral, that's a responsibility, that's a community that was lost. And now who are we enslaved to? The bank. <laughs> Where we were learning each other where we were holding each other accountable, where we were helping each other. What about the idea that now that we can afford to pay for the house and hire other people to build it, isn't that progress also? I don't think we can afford it. <laughs> no, I'm saying if and when somebody can afford it. Uh -huh. I'm not saying that yes. everybody can. Yes, yes, because yes. Because we all have different levels yes. in stature. Yes, you know? I understand. So we're, when we we're have, someone to when, work. when we're looking at the progress mm -hmm. as progress is known, then those who didn't have 50 years ago, mm -hmm. because they committed to change in the family, the now people that have, that have not mm -hmm. have, we have a greater number of middle class now. Mm -hmm. right. So it's helpful when you look at reasonable thinking that if I could spread the money around, I don't need to give you peas and carrots and, 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 and peas and rice. I could give you whatever you're worth in cash and you could spend that cash on other things to help your family. Mm -hmm. That's part of change too. That's part of change and that's a good thing. Yes. But when we are, what is it the Bible says? When we're Slave, we're, we're the borrower and we're slave to the lender. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and, and I, I think that's a strong point. Yes. And there lies the education of management mm -hmm. of your set of circumstances. Yes. And in this case, yes. we're talking about money mm -hmm. or management of your control or personal control. Because you, know, you become anybody's slave, you no longer have ownership of yourself. So, can we also say that money? or a love of money has assisted with the breakdown in the family. Misuse of money, yes. See, I, I would want us to actually, and this is not to you, I'm so glad you touched on this. Some people are not interpreting the value of money. Yes. Love of money, I love money mm -hmm. for me to help others. Yes, yes. yes. I want, yes. it's not enough money I can make. Yes. Because I've got so many things I like to contribute yes. to. Yes, sure. yes, yes. So my love for money is not for demise or to be selfish be, with. To, that's right. Yeah. That's so important. we need to understand yeah. the value of money mm -hmm. and how it could be used based on our objectives and our goals and our visions. Now, when I think about that, pardon me? I was just saying, on that point, on what you was talking about as far as being able to afford something, and her point was that we helped each other. I had the privilege of going to Pakistan, and we went way up into the mountains. Yes. And they were doing this road. They were paving a road. They had a big barrel, probably, If you made this table a circumference, and inside that barrel, 
they had their uh, the tar. Mm -hmm. They had a fire underneath of it. They had man with flip flops on, taking that and throwing it on the road. And then they had the guys coming through and the rocks on it and on and doing it. <laughs> Me, if my intelligence said, why don't you guys get a machine to do this? The guy looked at me and said, then what are, I'm going to only employ at least 20 men if I do that. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So that, that, there's values. If you're thinking, if you're thinking, they can go, you know, so we want to get things done quick yes. many yes. times. Yes. Well, <laughs> many times we can't afford it. That's right. And many times what happens to the rest of the community. Yes. And that's a, that's a wonderful point because uh, in light of that, I recall when I was in Mecca, this guy told a story about the different people in, in the urban areas, the rural areas, and the suburban areas. And he said, you know, this one area here, you'll never see the, that guy trading his donkey and his, his, and his um, um, cart. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know why? Because this village has belief systems, and if we encourage them to adopt what the city life is, we're going to hurt a lot of the villagers. Mm. Mm. So we're not going to discourage him not to have his donkey or his car. Mm -hmm. So in light of what the protection of people are in their set of circumstances, we should be looking out for their interests and applying solutions that's going to cater to their need within their interests. Now, Brother Carmel, Go ahead. Just, yes. I, I think it's important because this money issue is, yes. uh, is, is it has in some ways uh, created a division in our families. And uh, what I mean by that, all that was said is, is so relevant, but in Bermuda, what has happened through the experience of the black family is that the black woman has been enabled and pushed ahead educated herself, mm -hmm. and so she is making more money sometimes in the family, and there is, when we talk about values, that has caused sometimes some disconcertedness in the family, because then the man feels devalued. And so there are, when you talk about the challenges, how do we go back and address that there has to be respect in both places, because the children want to see, want to, they cannot grow limping around. They want to be able to respect and see their father, and some of these fathers are in sometimes out of the children's lives, but they can contribute. And so we have to discuss this whole financial thing and say money isn't everything, it's important now. How can we, even if we can't live with our child's father, how do we include that father, vice versa? So I think when we look at finance, we do have to keep it be, uh, in perspective because to have a well-rounded family, we have to be physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually and financially strong. Mm -hmm. We can't have one outweighing the other. And so I think that that is something that we need to look at. And I'm so glad you spoke on the imbalance as it relates to, and I made a statement on, on my show on Tuesday, which, which I said, and I intentionally said it, because I wanted to uh, raise some eyebrows. We've been giving Jesus so much that we've left the world to someone else. Mm. We see spirituality in a way that we no, no longer see the balance in life. Yes. I went to a woman's house politicking, and <laughs> I'll never forget this picture in my mind, man. I walked up to the door. You know how Bermuda houses are. Screen doors there. You can look right here and see the, see the silhouette of, of, of the, the woman washing dishes. That's what she was doing. When she looked, it was a sunny day. She looked out the screen door and looked at me. I could hear her in her mind saying what you want, because she didn't even come to the door. So I said, I'm here, and I told her what I was here for. She let me finish very politely and said, listen, I don't need anything of what you brought, you're bringing. All I have is Jesus, and that's all I need. I left here, I said, wow. I wasn't bothered about her not accepting me as uh, the message in politics. But that message of all she has and all she needs is Jesus, and she don't need to hear anything else. The policies that are protecting our children mm -hmm. 
They need to understand them. The legislators who are not representing the decent policies to protect family, they need to understand them. All you have is Jesus and don't want politics. What do you say, Reverend? Well, I mean, quite, quite a few believers say what we need is Jesus, but I think there has to be a balance. There, there has to be a balance in, um, because I believe my perspective and my belief system says that Jesus will make us relevant in the community. Mm. Say that a little louder, man. I want the audience to hear that. But, uh, okay, let me give my experience. I, I was born a Pentecostal. I'm a Pentecostal. I'm, I'm, I'm a believer. Okay? Yes. But, but um, and that's why I'm non-denominational, whatever it is. <laughs> yes. Right? But, you know, I, I believe that most believers, and perhaps I get flack for this, but it's okay. I, I, we're having some of the anyway, so, you know. Uh, most believers are, are, are not relevant enough in society. That's why most people don't even want Jesus today, mm -hmm. based on the fact that um, he seems spooky, you know, it's, it's not relevant, it doesn't apply to life itself. Yes. It doesn't apply to change, it doesn't apply to, to growth. Yes. And I, th I, think, I think Jesus was very relevant. I, I believe he was. Yes. And I think that we have to teach ourselves how, how, how to be that way. Um, and I, I think that's a defense mechanism sometimes, you yes. know, um, um, like the ostrich keeping our head in the sand instead of, you know, taking our head out of the sand and looking at life yes. and say, how do I apply this to my community? How do I apply Jesus this, using that word Jesus? This great gospel this that's, great gospel. that's atta attached to the, the life of Christ yes. also reminds us that the, we're dying because of lack of knowledge. It certainly does. Like people suffer because of lack but of knowledge. We're suffering because of lack of knowledge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And to not want to understand the balance of life will keep the individual in ignorance. In ignorance. Mm -hmm. And ignorance causes death. Yes, it does, sir. They say ignorance can be oppressive. Very oppressive. And so can I say something that very right. frank there? It can be oppressive. And that's why, you know, amongst all the other things I can say about challenges, I think we need to look at our colonialism. The system in which we live in, that's a big subject. Oh, and guess what? We're going to get on back that another time. Yeah. Because we can't repair it a lot. I want to move on because of yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, but you, yeah. But you, you said enough on that question that I said just now. Yes. I want to say something here. When I think about the current future threats, extreme pleasure seeking, that's a threat. Mm. We, we seem to be... Yes. Living for the weekend. Yes, yes, true. Intoxicants. Mm -hmm. The idea of bringing a bottle of rum and building the house. We've got to stop that. Go ahead, sir. We usually yeah. eat peas and rice and chicken and a bottle of rum. Don't forget that. Mm. The rum was there. Yes, We've got to stop that. Because that same guy became oh. brutal to mama and daddy mm -hmm. or mama and grandma. Mm -hmm. That uh, same person. Uh, Unbridled yeah. teenage sex. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes. Miseducation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Racial and religious imagery and psychological confusion. Mm, so true. You're, you're looking like your mom over here. No, you heard me. I heard you. I'm, re you know, I'm reflecting. That whole psychological piece oh, is something piece. that actually um, we need to come to grips with. There's a lot of mental illness mm -hmm. in our community mm -hmm. and it comes from some of the abuses it also i would like to go back to it comes from us not feeling good enough based on race based on experience that we don't have this structure of the family or uh this person's got a different daddy that person's got a di and all of that stuff going around attached to shame and attached to things where people are not tackling some of the things that you're tackling mm -hmm. in your in your ministry tackling some of the things that said no we all came from one god and so therefore we have to know that there are exper experienced professionals dealing with some yes. of these matters and how we talk to one another even the undressed teenager or whatever mm. I forget the, the unbridled to unbridled yes unbridled yes. teenage sex sex, sex. Mm -hmm. sex so there are 
uh, facilities in our community, if you don't feel capable of talking, there's teen services, there is yes, Department of Family Services. Yes, we have a list of helping agencies. Mm -hmm. Go to your faith uh, house, mm -hmm. mosque, synagogues. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they all have programs. That's right. And if even the one of the key uh, people that can help us is the counselors in the Bermuda uh, public yes, school yes. system. These are trained professionals that can help parents and children to deal with this. Setting an example, once again, but not letting people feel isolated because they might have done these practices. Mm -hmm. There mm -hmm. is always a space for grace. Yes. Always a space for grace. So yeah. I, I, I believe when you go to those, I think those are all, the whole, we, we need a whole subject yes, of what has happened happens. to us mm -hmm. during this enslavement period. But we have to be honest yes. and we have to be truthful because some of this stuff we can remend ourselves. We have to be frank about this yes. stuff. We've got to face it. Yes. We've had some benefits of the things that we ended up doing just to survive. Yes. Yes. And we seem to think our survival was victory. <laughs> when we end up with stuff that's bad habits, yes. it there wasn't victory. There you go. Mm -hmm. So we could now examine what we were left to do to survive with and now we're going to assess what we need to let go because there are threats they could be threats it's a good segue the way you responded to that question we'll get into the next question what are some of the tools tips and resources which can be used to grow and strengthen the family brother imam Patience is the, one of the things. <laughs> patience. Yes. As parents, having patience. Speaking for myself, if I kind of mm. lack a little bit of that <laughs> with <Yeah>. children. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, being truthful. Again, someone spoke earlier about uh, having, talking to your children about your experiences and what, what worked for you and what didn't work for you, and trying to uh, show them the correct way in which to go, or, or a better way in which to go. Um, having balance in our lives. Having balance in our lives. And I always go back to the individual because it's my belief that God has equipped us with uh, the tools that are necessary. Mm -hmm. That's why we have these five senses. It's part of the equipment that God gave us to make sound decisions. You know? Um, I was maybe two or three Ramadans ago. Ramadan is when the Muslims fast. And I was reading the Quran. And I never saw Harriet Tubman as a righteous person until then. Mm. Because righteousness, part of being righteousness is freeing the, uh, uh, freeing the slave. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I always saw her as a revolutionary, which I was proud of that part. But I said, look at it. This is a righteous woman. She done righteous. That's right. Thing. Yes. And mm -hmm. she didn't have no education, so to speak. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. So these wow. things are in us. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. if, it, if it weren't for mm -hmm. those people who expressed what was in them, not what they learned in the Damascus or the church or the Sunday school or wherever, they expressed what was in them that something was wrong with this society. Sure. If it weren't for those people, I mean, we would have been maybe still back a hundred years ago. What are some of the tips that you could consider, Ms. Shield? Tips and tools, resources. Yeah. Um, I liked what. Um, Michelle. Michelle spoke on talking about how, you know, there's counselors, there's assistance in the community. We as a black people in general have not taken advantage right. of that. Mm -hmm. We have actually mm -hmm. discouraged, you know, oh, if you go to a counselor, if you go to a mm -hmm. psychologist, you must be crazy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. No. We have right. been a society who has been afraid to address mental health and our mental health mm -hmm. wellness. 
which is so important. Um, I also like what the Imam said and talks about um, mm -hmm. the senses we were born with. Yes. Mr. Because Mr. I believe that when we are born, we are very close to God. Yes. That we hear him mm -hmm. as babies, that we understand things in the spiritual realm. And the more that we are placed in the world, the less that sense is diminished. Mm. Um, the more that sense is diminished. And I believe that we have to get to a space whereby we get back to that sense, that we focus on what would God have us do? What is the right thing to do? Mm. What would please the spirit, not the flesh? Mm. We're going to look at social responsibility because of its value, you know, at this point, because of time being upon us. I believe it's a very important uh, area. Is the black family accepting its social responsibility? Hmm. Right? Yes and no. I answer both ways. So let's look at the no. Um, I think we need um, I think we need more fathering from our, 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 our black race. Yes. I, I think we need men to step in. Um, while I counsel young men and work with young men, the number one thing that I heard from that my dad's not wrong. Hmm. You know And so we need men to step up, and um, it could be any man, but I need to put, the, put it out there. What I found out based on old school nothing against myself and all of us, is that uh, we tend to want to correct before we care and show compassion. We must care and show compassion first, and that care and compassion um, helps to develop a rapport, a relationship. Mm. So we cannot, we have to care first. Most times we want to correct first. I've heard it on, 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 on the radio, stuff, you know, well, why don't we do this, these guys? Look at game bangers out there, why don't we do this, why don't we do that? And, and it's all rigid. Yeah. But what about the care? What, what, you know, we don't condone the behavior. But what about the care, the compassion? And when we get the care and the compassion, they start to trust. Yes. Especially men. When they start to trust, then we can extend the challenge to them and confront them. Mm. You know, when I leave here tonight, I'm going to confront the person while I was running a little late. Yes. yes. Because I developed that rapport. Yes. So now I can go confront, and hopefully, they take the challenge and they make the right choices and change. Mm -hmm. When I think about social responsibility, I want to look at what has been put in front of us with strong support. Yes. Social responsibility is an ethical framework and says that an individual has an obligation to work and cooperate with individuals and organizations yes. for the benefit of the community that will inherit that will inherit the world that the said individual leaves behind. Mm. And we think about that. Mm -hmm. How you respond to our social responsibility. We go right back to the building block, the foundation, the family. And you build those, use those values that we've talked about this evening and translate it into those people that are coming behind you. Is the black family accepting responsibility, social responsibility? That's the question. Are we accepting it? I think I would have to say in some cases, yes, and in some cases, no. Yes, because there are lots of uh, families that are out there encouraging their, their family members, I won't just say their children, their family members, to participate in kind acts. Yes, yes. Right? Into organizations that feeding the needy, those, 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 that is a social responsibility. Those are, there are families doing that. There are schools that are doing that, making sure that children are taking up their, but the, on the no side, we, once we, we can go, we can trace it right back. We're being very selfish. Oh. We're being very, very selfish. Some of it starts with the out of whack, unbalanced idea that you i am got mine, you get yours. That is not what ha the Harriet Tubman's of this world, great giants. Mm -hmm. We can look in Bermuda. Mm -hmm. We have the beginnings of the Sunshine League. We, 
the beginnings of the uh, domestic abuse, yes. center against abuse. Those were started from black families making sure that there were organizations. I spoke about the largest. That is, that was our bank. The, we can do these things today. We can get on social media and create those same kind of platforms, but we have to do it rather than going on Facebook, trying to find out somebody's business, and you have the time it's wrong, or it's what the Royal Gazette wants you to believe. We can be doing that. Yes, yes, we can be doing that. So, yes. yes, we have to take more responsibility, but we also have to be accountable, not only for ourselves, we have to encourage our children and our families to be accountable for what they do know, and what they don't and do. And we know in this world that we're involved in right now how much social uh, media is functioning, mm -hmm. how they're functioning. Mm -hmm. Are we speaking to that, that which you said, in trying to address what is unacceptable behavior? Are we doing enough of that on social media? Mm -hmm. I think that there are some people that are trying. One of the limitations... Is it, is it being accepted? Because we want to know, are we doing enough? And if not, why not? If we're doing it and being rejected, how do we feel about that? You want to speak directly to that? Because that's a serious issue. But once again, I have to, I have to go back, Brother Cromwell, is that you have to, what Brother Bishop oh, Lendy might. said, is we have to have, we have to have built up that trust in that mm -hmm. before we can, we can go out there and attack some of these things, we have to build up that trust, we have to build up that respect, not just for the parents, but the children, the parents have to respect the children as well, and because they, are, they have some answers, like you said. So I would just say, no, we can do more, and I would encourage all of us through our organizations to do more. Well, we have uh, eight minutes to wrap up. I'm going to give you about a minute and a half each. Hmm. Starting with you, Brother Imam. Well, I would definitely like to thank uh, all the panelists here and yourself. The information that was received was excellent information. And I think will be useful to the society in which we live in. Uh, one of the things that I think of is that a lot of times we see a problem or we think it's a problem, but it's just a symptom. <laughs> And in, in, in doing that, um, again, it takes those people who know, who have the skills to say, listen, um, those are just the symptoms. The problem is A, B, or C. <clears throat> so a lot of times we try to go direct and attack the, what we think is the problem, but it's only the symptoms. So I think if, again, we have to start to think bigger, think from within, not what everyone else is saying, but what we actually, what we actually see and feel. And if you express that, and if we're wrong, then you just, again, readjust and go at it another way. Michelle. I would say one word, relationships. We have to build relationships. In order to do that, we have to hear each other's stories. Because when I know where you've come from, when I see you, you're doing wrong, I can now say, okay, I've heard your story. I understand a little bit about what's happening. Now let's look at, like the ma'am said, the foundation of your story, and let's try to readjust where you are now because somewhere along the way, you may have gone wrong. But I can't do that if I don't have a relationship with you. So family is about relationship with each other, with the community. Mm. I'll pick it up right there. My sister left off. Relationship with God, Allah, mm -hmm. um, Jehovah. Um, according to the text in Matthew, it says that, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, your soul, yes. your mind. Well, your might, we put this effort into it. And it's, if we love God that way, it says we love our neighbor as ourselves. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, most of us don't love ourselves. That's why mm -hmm. we can treat our neighbor wrong. And that's within the household as well. 
You know, I just want to put a plug out there for my, my friend, um, Bishop Leroy Bean. He's putting a book out that you might be interested in. Gang Violence is by Design, Exposing the Lie. It's coming out within the next week. Gang Violence is by Design, Exposing the Lie. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's called uh, in. Yes, I'm reminded of a surah in the Holy Quran that says we must believe it. Surely man is at loss, except those who believe and do good and exhort one another to truth and exhort one another to patience. So I would just say my last words are truth and patience. Mm. Mm. We've had a wonderful evening here. And this is just a tip yes, of the iceberg. And when I reflect on certain things that would be a part of uh, tips and, uh, uh, and tools, yes. I would like to look at belief in a higher power. Okay. There is different perceptions of higher power. I, I'll never forget when I first heard the, the 12 steps by someone who was giving me ideas of what goes on with the 12 step program in alcoholism. Okay. And they said they, they do not promote an individual coming in to project their view of the higher power to somebody else. Don't say, God, you need to worship God so and so. No. Let us all agree that there is a higher power that we all need to acknowledge. And we all then can recognize what that support system from a higher power can do. Steady work, not just spirituality, but putting our hands to the grindstone and steady work. Okay. Physical work, what they say, elbow grease, they used to say years ago. Mm -hmm. Proper education, not just any education, they said a person properly educated uses the education to address their needs. We have complaints that our children who we sweat, get, get blood, sweat, and tears to be educated, get qualified, and they do not come back with the understanding of contributing to the needs of their community. I'm not saying that they wasted their education, but how is it that their education is not serving their needs. They say if a person gets educated and their education cannot be used to improve themselves, and if we're looking at the black family mm -hmm. as not just being the nuclear family, but the village, the community, and blah, 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 the broad family, the education must raise the level of commitment and understanding from the individual to address their needs, and that's why it was so courageous for this group to come up and say that we need to speak to the black community because we need the attention mm -hmm. without any apology. We understand that there is the broad family, but specifically we have to take responsibility and address the black family. Livable household incomes, not livable ways for the individual, because the, the modern day, so many people has to work That's right. to get that money. So one person doesn't need a livable wage. We need a livable income in the family, household income. And last but not least, a good work ethic with moral accountability attached to it. <laughs> a good work ethic. Very good. Well. Don't just make the money, but suggest that you're going to make money to do good with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're on 9 o'clock, and I thank you all, in particular you, Ms. Chiu, who gave us a pinch-hitting response by responding so in one day yes. to our request. Yes, it That's is. admirable. Yes, it is. That's a commitment from a citizen. Yes, it is. And I say thank you. Thank you all, Imam, and your community for having this program for the broader community. Bishop Landy, interfaith yes, sir. Yes, sir. is more important today yes. than us having individual faith. Mm -hmm. oh, I love interfaith. It. Yes, sir. 
And Michelle Calvin, I think you represented that grandma well. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to Channel 82. Tune in next time and look out for our next program in two months' time, and we will bring it to you whenever we arrive at that topic and time. Have the rest of a great evening.